Lord Eckelfirth, I think we need to discuss the situation with Berkshire. What is it, Akarthen? What would you like to say? I think you should consider pressing your claim. But why? I There are going to be few opportunities for you to expand the territory that you hold within the domain. And I think that you shouldn't pass this singular moment up. But but my grandfather, he, he said, yes, your grandfather is a man of peace and he wants things to remain much the way they are because he believes that a balance has been achieved. I do not agree. I don't think it is possible for you to maintain this kingdom without a strong core of territory of your own to develop. Do you really think so? I do. I will take it under consideration. Thank you. Hello and welcome connoisseurs of Crusader Kings 3, friends of the channel and newcomers alike. We are here once again with Duke Egelfort of Kent. We are going to begin this episode because we are now a man with a little petition liege. No, not a petition liege. We don't need to petition him, but we do need to pay homage. So we're going to do a little pay homage here. There we go. We're going to demonstrate submission. And we're going to quickly reorganize our route. You see, we're going to have to go all the way from our... Because the ocean is relatively safe for us, we might just... Uh... Realistically speaking, in spite of the fact this this is what they've selected, it makes a lot more sense that we would... Uh... We'd go by sea. Right? But then we're going to go here. And here. Land there. And then we're going to go here, just so that it marks it back into the ocean. Uh, that's interesting that it would do that. Okay, we'll do this. The game doesn't seem to like the ocean too much, I I've noticed sometimes. And then we're just going to go all the way down off his dike. Because it is a significant and historical place for us to visit. And then on our way home, we will follow up along the north like that. We can do it. It will fit in our travel plans. I think it's a good trip for us to take. We can visit Old Man Dumnarth up here in his capital. But uh, we're not going to head up to, to the north because our great uncle there is dead. And we barely even know his son at all start traveling. That might be something we need to repair, though. There was a point in time in this game where we were down to simply... Let's go back up to the old top here. Good old King Dumnareth. The second. Petty King of Cornwall. There was a point in time in which it was just the Petty King of Cornwall, young Odgar, His brother was dead, Lord Allen, and then his son, Ferverden, came into existence. They, we, we got here <laughs> a lot faster than I was expecting, so we didn't get to spend as much time as there as I wanted to. Servants, usher me into King Ricketts Great Hall in Cornwall, where he sits his throne waiting to hear my pledge. I kneel at the feet of my lord and pledge the many oaths of homage as his scribes record the event. With that, the ceremony complete is complete and I have nothing to offer my king except my promise to faithfully serve as a vassal of the kingdom. Forget bids me rise and confirms his satisfaction along with my rights to the lands I rule in his stead. Hail the king. So we gave up a hundred prestige and gained fifty back and the Perdin dynasty gets twenty-five renown and we head home. So while we're doing our trip home we will continue to look at the family tree we were talking about The beginning but since then the family has grown we are now 77 members large and pretty secure the branches of our family are pretty much the original dumnarth branch which has split into lord ricketts side and earl for side and then we have old kingdom narth's uh, brother Uliad. His son, Alan, and then their line here. His daughter, Dutch Uthelfirth. I think she still probably... Uh, she rules in the Duchy of Man. So his granddaughter. 
Alan, Lord Inwer, and then down here, they ruled up in um, Sway compliments. To make my uncle, Prince Sigrik, more susceptible to my attempts at approaching him, I can include a compliment in my next missive to his court. I will be sure to mention his assertive presence. So my brother suggests this. I'm going to take my brother's word. So they ruled in Wales. We gave them we gave them land in Wales. Okay, so we have met a wise man. How do we feel about that? I think we're a little skeptical. I think we're a little skeptical of these kinds of wise men out out in the world. But we're going to seek the omen anyway because we have a family tradition of seeking the omen. We got a bad omen. Travels bode ill I'm gonna pause this for a second or it gets too out of control so basically they ruled in land we gave them in wales and uh dumnarth seems to have granted one of the children of this branch of the Kernu line man which is cool the island of man which we control it is actually pretty much been integrated into the kingdom of wales not not fully integrated, but that's where it sits. Then we have Odgar, who had three sons. King Ricket, King Dumnareth, four sons. It's important to not forget Goslin. King Leofith, and then Goslin the priest. King Ricket, our grandfather, has a pretty strong line. He is, of course, our father. Prince Resman, who died of the family curse of alcoholism. We have Prince Minver here. Also suffers from the family curse of alcoholism. Then we have our former steward, no, I'm sorry, our steward and former regent, Prince Ilkarthen, and his family. And then we have Prince Sigrik here, down at the bottom. Oh, he is on death's door. I would not be surprised if he does not make it through the next few months. Unless he gets lucky and something here heals. We may see, we may see a child count holding Sigrid's territory. There is Ferverden, my brother, and my sister Camilla of Ricket's daughters. Biografu has been married for quite a while and has quite a number of children. Then we have Princess. And in then we have Princess Endelatantia. She have Edelfeld as a daughter, and of course many children. Her husband is Lord Gerdelik, who we have had the problems with. Now, one of the things I find interesting is that while he doesn't have like these claims, I have no idea where he found his way to press claims for our territory because he has no direct lineage. In fact, his lineage goes up through here. He is, I believe, part... No, not Lord Allens. He's part of Lord Ferverdin's... Uh, yeah, there he is, right there. So, he has no connection whatsoever through lineage to, um, to Kent, which he keeps trying to claim, but his wife does. The thing is, he isn't using her claims. He is using his own spurious claims to try to, to take the land. She has an argument, but of course as a woman in a uh, male-favoring uh, society, culture, religion, she can't press a claim against me. She could have when I was a child, though. But he's pressing his own spurious claims instead of hers. But she, she definitely does, though, have a claim to Kent. Because I believe... We share a mother, because all of King Ricket's children are legitimate. They He had only one wife through his whole life. I don't think he remarried. Oh, the, the AI remarried him. Which I suppose is fine, you know? Yes, it appears that the AI did in fact remarry him. I hadn't noticed that last episode, but he was not remarried when uh, I was still playing him. We have Othofled. 
Let's see where she is living now. She is the Queen of Germany. Is our aunt. And we have Otho Gifu, who I think she's married to an unlanded man. Yeah, so Carling. I think he held territory when they got married, but lost it. She's another connection, of course, up to Queen Bertha in Lotharingia for the family. Prince Nocarthen. We have Xenor, who died of typhus, I believe. Yes, she died of typhus at 20. If we look over here at King Dumnarth, we have his... Eldest daughter, she is married to the King of Brittany. Then we have his son and heir, who is married to this um, Norse Gael. Ooh. So looking at King Dumnarth's section of the line, we have his daughter, who is the Queen of Brittany. We have this daughter who died at 45 and was married to this man. From the Wessex family, from the old kings of England. We have his heir, Seward, whose heir is Kamar. Kamar is marrying our sister. So you can see they are not first cousins because these are our first cousins. I think they're I think that sh that he's a third cousin. Never sure about those. But anyway, she she's marrying him. And then the rest of the family of his there. I think there'll probably be land for both brothers. We have old King Leo, who died of old age, we noticed in the last episode. His son is King Odgar II, named for his father, grandfather, like named for Leo's grandfather, father, his grandfather. This is his heir, who also has an heir, so his line is pretty secure. He also has a second son as well. And every single one of the rest of his children are daughters. He has one son, who has two sons himself. And this 20-year-old strapping fellow also has a son of his own. So that's the family. All the significant people in the family. There are other families that we may look at later because I, uh, I think they're interesting. But for now, we're going to move on. One of the hardest decisions for us to make at this point is whether or not we try to conquer Berkshire. Now, I'm pretty sure that our our former guardian, our liege, would tell us to not do so, because he's against that kind of thing, as a rule. But I'm pretty sure that our former regent and steward would be strongly arguing that we should do it. Well, we still have the chance. Before we lose the opportunity, because once we become king, she will fall out of our reach because she's in this duchy. And of course, we have no influence over... That's the wrong thing. <laughs> she's in this duchy, and we have no influence over um, vassals of vassals. And as predicted, our counselor and uncle, Sigurik, has died. I think we want to deal with there. Who should we put in his place? I think our new friend, Othel Siege, is going to... I think our new friend, uh, Ethel Sieg is going to be put in his place because he's just such an excellent spy master. So we'll do that. We may have to shift this around once, uh... Once Sigrik's son comes of age, once Leofric comes of age, because Leofric, uh may desire a position for himself. We might want to try to have some influence over his education. I could do it myself. It's going to be many years before I have a child of my own. Uh, my wife isn't even of age yet, and she won't be for quite my future wife, my betrothed. 
is still 11 years away from not 11 years nine years away from being of age so he'll be almost grown by the time she even marries me i think we're going to take him under our wing and we're going to give him a learning education as per the family tradition it'll help us to secure our future having one of our close vassals be very indebted to us so we're gonna offer guardianship we're gonna do it ourselves. this is a good match now he won't be able to move to me which is a bit of a problem because i won't be able to put him i won't be able to get a court tutor and put him under the tutor i should consider don't really need a for the same reason i don't really need a wet nurse yet because i won't have those kids for a long i won't have any kids for a long long time well a relatively long time not forever we can no longer sway him because he's dead so let's begin swaying minver and then we'll go back to ilkarthan excellent so i guess the question is are we doing this this war is going to come down to one simple roll of the dice if her liege can convince queen bertha to join her we lose if we get if we get queen bertha we win it's as simple as that so what i'm trying to decide here to figure out whether or not this war is fair or if it's gamey is whether or not i would declare this war if I knew for sure that Queen Bertha would stay out of it, like if she didn't exist. There's 800 of her strength is far away. Uh, he is in the middle of France. Not going to get here anytime soon. If I was to declare war on her on her own strength alone, it would be very close. Like very, very close. I don't think... If I was 100% sure that my ally would come out on my side and not on her side, it wouldn't. So if I do want to declare that war, that means we need to find another alliance. Which means finding someone for our brother to marry. Switching this to alliance power. We have family marriages. We have an Aquitaine marriage thing. We have a Leon marriage. There is some history between us and Leon. Um... Particularly for Verdun's line, married multiple times into the Spanish lines down in uh, in Brittany. I mean, this will be a good alliance for him afterwards, right? And we will have to find a situation for our brother some way, someday, because of course our our father simply didn't have enough titles to give him a title. He only really held Kent. That's mostly. Our brother was cheated by the fact that our father died before he inherited, because there would have been more titles available for Ferverden if he died after the inheritance. Ah, uh, I think this is a good marriage for him. Now with that alliance, I think my feelings about this are different. The key is, would I declare war if the queen wasn't involved at all? Like, if I could assume that she would join neither of us? And in this case, I think I would at this point. Now, if there was no queen, if we were playing, if the game was set up so that the uh, so that shared alliances refrained from fighting instead of it being a random draw, I would declare this. It does mean that if this goes bad, I will have to accept the outcome if she joins her, which she might. But I'm going to do it. Oh, we never declare it. We never picked a Casa Valley. I do that all the time. And then we're going to immediately ask for her to join. And then for him to join. And then we are going to move our flag to here. I mean, her strength is pretty equal to ours. We might want to actually refrain our flag and let our allies come and join us before we make a decision so we will raise all here and see how it turns out uh, he joined us and so did she so the war is effectively ours at this point but for now we're going to defend our territory 
So she seems to want to pass over to here. I don't want to engage her any place except where she's sieging. Um, because we don't have the strength. <laughs> Once our allies get here, hopefully they'll start the sieges in her territory. But if she does decide to start, stop and do a siege in our lands, we will fight. But if she doesn't, we won't. She'll probably defeat us in a straight-up battle. Uh, that is probably going to change right now, though, because our first ally is joining us right away. Let's get in there. As a rule, I'm going to decide all like situations like that this way. Uh, if there is a shared alliance, I will only declare the war if I would, assuming that that person didn't exist. And then we'll we'll roll the bones on whether or not we get the uh, they join us or join them. And let's now go back and siege the war target. Hopefully our allies are going to make this war go pretty fast at this point. Hopefully they spread out and do some sieges for us. The 50% already, which means it should be pretty fast. I don't want to be in this war for too long because I can't afford it. Let's just speed up to four for the sieges. As is uh, tradition. To get them to roll out faster. And I think, I think we're going to hold this ourselves. Although I would consider giving it to my brother. A new translation. More than anything, my quest to be a learned man is teaching me how much I do not yet know. What more, there must be so much knowledge that has been long lost to the ages. As books fall apart, languages are forgotten. A new translation. Medical Insights of Hippoc um, Hippocrates' Treaties. Yeah, of course we're going to do this. So, we're going to grab open-minded. Our first siege down on the war target's about to be completed. A new translation. I find myself working on the translation of the Treaties of Hippocrates for hours. I, I, I said that wrong twice. I'm going to start this one again. I find myself... I find myself working on the translation of the Treaties of... Uh, uh, Hippocrates, for hours under the flickering light of a candle, often I will barely notice the time passing. My scribes remind me, however. My lord, it must be past midnight now. Is it not time to rest? Ugh, oh, you can all keep working while I rest? Yes, some sleep would do us good. Absolutely. Everybody get some sleep. We'll get right back on this in the morning. I ex expect good, refreshed work from you all. What are we doing? Oh, are these new prisoners? These are new prisoners. I was going to say, well, what are we doing? The prisoners, why are we holding prisoners? They deserve a chance at freedom. Um, we're not a cruel man, right? Uh, I actually haven't looked at my knights enough to know whether or not a 10 is in our, our bracket or not. So our very worst knight is a 10. Uh, looking at our accolade, we got we got two people involved. That's fine. Did we we didn't lose an accolade? We only have one available to us, so that's all fine too. Uh, we do want to. After this war is over, we're gonna disband these light footmen because when our grandfather dies, all of his units are better than li light footmen. So we would prefer to get two of his units. Uh, I think we'll keep everything else though. I think we'll keep everything else though. All right, we, we've we grown up a little bit. We have our beard now. Everything is going to be great. We're going to probably change that, though, in a minute when we, uh, we get out of this. Okay, betrothal fulfilled. New translation, so my brother is now married. No, that's not true. My sister is now married to my distant cousin. New translation. A specific phrase from the Treaties of Hippocrates has been frustrating my translation efforts for days. I have even started muttering it to myself sometimes. Still struggling with that one, are you? My bishop has a weighty old tome. One simply needs to know where to look. Uh... No games. Just tell me what I'm looking Yeah, exactly. If you know, you know, okay? Sinarad, <laughs> I get it. But if you know, you know. Just, just, just tell me. That ends the war right there. As we said, as soon as this war is over, 
Now that we got good strong alliances, we're going to immediately get rid of this light footman right here. Just so that hopefully we get better units from the inevitable death of our old grandfather. We haven't looked at him in a little while. Let's turn this back down to three where it goes. How are things doing uh, over here in Kent? I mean, sorry, in uh, Cornwall. How you doing, old man? Poor. Scout ridden and poor. Do a new... Whoa! Whoa, 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 <laughs> Uh, did he literally just die right after I looked at him? He totally did. Oh, the crown looks good. Maybe we keep the beard, because the crown kind of looks good with the beard. I think we keep the beard. We're gonna, we're gonna, before we do anything, okay, we need to calm down. First of all, this is a tragic event and very important, right? Literally, our grandfather, who raised us when our father died, has died, and that is an important thing to actually find some, some like, thoughts about, to have some thinking about. Do all of this. Let's go into our, uh, first we're gonna... I think we're going to keep the beard, because I think the beard looks great with the crown. I think we're going to change the haircut. Um, as a sort of tribute to our own father, we're going to go with our father's haircut, which was the ponytail. That looks fine. I kind of like that. I think we're going to do this for a while. It, it just might be his boyish... Uh, <laughs> this just might be him being boyish, you know? Having a little bit of boyish taste for a bit, but that that's that's the truth there. All right, so the old man has died. <sighs> Ricket, you will be missed. You did glorious things for this dynasty. You traveled the entire world. And you made Cornwall great while still helping your brothers to maintain their territory and be great in their own right. The last of the three brothers to live here is Kingdom Narth, but he is... A shadow of his former self because he is now infirm. Just waiting out his last days until the next generation takes over. It's going to be interesting because I am going to be of a different generation than all the other kings. They're going to be of my father's generation. And I am, of course, a much younger man. You look like such a sweet... He looks like such a sweetheart, like such a kid, even with that giant beard. You know, he's, uh, he's a very talented king, which is great. Maybe maybe he tries to overcome his difficulty with uh, intrigue eventually. That would be pretty interesting. Let's uh, set up the court. In the corner close to us, we're going to put up the Perdane cabinet that, of course was made for our great-grandfather in his memory. What else do we got? I put up the wild rose skull. Give it a nice prominent position. Over here we have a fine book about books for a learning and some prestige and some learning lifestyle experience. Particularly good for us. We're going to put up the Breton throne which is hilarious because the King of Brittany got drunk and gave it to us, at his throne to us, in a random drunken fit. It's not just a family thing, it's also a dynasty thing. The prize brooch, these were things won by, this was won by Rickett in a, uh, in a competition in which I believe he won a recital, and this was put up by the original King Dumnarth the second, right at the very beginning. Petty King Dumnarth, who won this also in a recital, right? Yep. All right, all our court artifacts are in place. Good. How much are we going to fund this thing? So if we maintain even funding, we don't quite make it to eight, which is where we are now. We make it only to seven. I feel like maybe we should do decent food for the uh, disease resistance. And then that'll have to be enough because we don't want to pay much more money than that right now. Our language, court language is Anglic. But at this point, I don't think that we're actually speaking uh, the language of the Anglo-Saxons. I think we're probably speaking some kind of hybrid. Like, more like a, um, an anglic Brythonic hybrid that sounds a little bit like a combination of 
Cornish and uh, Anglic. Because, you know, new new uh, new languages do develop over time, and we've had... We've been combining the two languages for many, 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 many years. Yes and No is a cool book that we got from that event in university, but I don't think we're going to keep it, simply because the Bejeweled Scriptures are just so much better. They're just literally so much better. So there's really nothing that we can reforge, which is kind of tragic. I wish more items could be reforged. Especially books. Considering that books is a type that's shared by both locations, you'd think more books would be able to be reforged. The sword can be reforged, but we don't have a spot for it. Maybe we're overdoing it with... Uh, I think we're going to do this. Even though Three Bejeweled scripture is, Scriptures is really good, I think the small health boost is better. Plenty of learning from books, you know. Just hanging out with three books, six books, five books, books everywhere. Just who we are. And a new council! Okay, so our Archbishop. We gotta think this through. If we're gonna fit all four people on the council, we gotta put them into positions where they can, that they can actually handle. We have nobody who's good at um, diplomacy except for Gerdelic, who I guess we're gonna make our Chancellor because we really have no one else. It's going to have to be Ilkarthen, which I guess makes sense. I mean, he was our steward before. He can continue to be our steward now. He served me pretty well. Minver will stay on as the marshal. I can't put him on as marshal. The whole dang thing. I'm going to put him on as spy master because I prefer to have a better spy master. And my marshal is just going to have to be adequate because we're going to put the duchess there. Okay. Okay, I feel pretty good about this feel pretty good about this. We have two inactive... Okay, we're, we... We can ask our Head of Faith for gold. That's where we're gonna start. We're gonna... We're, we can use that gold. We have men-at-arms to station. What did we keep? So we kept his Huskarls. Obviously, we have our armored footmen. Uh... We have onagers. Doesn't matter whose onagers are, they're all the same. We picked up his longbowmen, and we kept our longbowmen. So we're actually pretty militaristically strong here. This is not bad at all. I don't know why we picked this one first. But we did. <laughs> uh, once our prestige gets back up there, we'll probably get rid of our one that we had before and replace it with a better one. You are an acclaimed knight. Our number of knights is 13 now, which means 8 is actually probably a valid person on the list. No, it's not. So that's fine. We have people who can replace him. So we're gonna... So that the eight can have their life preserved. Because <laughs> we don't really want to force eights to fight if we can help it. Our uncle we're also gonna forbid because he's too important. And we'll let this random guy with an eleven take his place. Okay, this feels... This feels like a... Like a decent structure for transition. Uh... Yeah, I don't feel bad about this. I don't feel bad about this. We're gonna need to start developing, though. He seems to have put in a log fort building here, which I have no problem with at all. I think we'll just upgrade the log forts, in fact. If we look at where these guys are stationed, two forest keeps down here, right? Yes, we do. Which means, actually, the smaller... One of these should be moved to there. Not quite as good, but it'll get better in time. And then we want to move these guys to here. And that just leaves the onagers unstationed. I am good with everything I'm seeing. We're also going to just immediately build this to the seven. Like that. Gives us some strong longbowmen, which is really, really, really nice. And we're going to continue to build. Got to build up what we own. This is still 11 months away up here. We're building the second level of these forts. I actually think we're canceling this. Uh, because we might just switch the forts out altogether. I think I prefer the barracks. 
we're going to construct barracks here. And we're actually going to do the same. No, we're not. We're not going to we're not going to change this. This can build a barracks when we get another building slot. We're now the cultural head as well, which is good. I don't Yeah, there's no position for reforming and we wouldn't reform any of that anyway because it's all well picked. What is the thing that gets us the next building slot? Is it not even in this uh It's literally Bailiffs. It's literally what we're working on. So we're working on the thing that will get us the next slot. And it is six years away. That's not bad at all. Uh, we are particularly good at that stuff. Which is nice. Just a little bit longer, I think, today for this episode. Use this wealth wisely. So we got lots of money. And not that many places to invest it in. You're all pretty full. I can build you your trade port. I mean, I can build things that are not specifically for me, right? And I do need to keep money for when this actually, in 11 months, becomes ready to build in. And there's stuff to build here, too. We also want to build a city here. In fact, we could just do that now. Just to maximize our development in all the places we hold. Okay, so let's try to recover from our prestige debt. There's lots of things we could do. One thing we could do is we could hold a party, awake for our grandfather and in doing so we could also celebrate the uh, beginning of my new reign I'm having the notes of my translation of the trees of Hippocrates read back to me when my lord please forgive me but did you fall asleep heavens above the classic is a piece of Ugh, not you're just tired man I'm gonna take a break just to burn off some of that stress the big question is are we gonna keep our capital in Kent or are we gonna move it for now we're gonna leave it in Kent we're not gonna think about it too much right away New translation. My translation of the trees of Hippocrates is coming along, but one section of the version I am copying from gives me pause. My scribes insist that the words in the page mean as we hold two feet and spring rising edges of hunter. That cannot be right, can it? The meaning is obvious. Let me handle this. All right, so we have this little pilgrimage representing our coronation. So we're going to go up to Canterbury going to be very short i was going to put it on contemplative but there's literally no point because i can't go anywhere anyway because of how short the distance is and we're going to start our pilgrimage let's get up there here we are in canterbury where we are going to first get coronated and then to experience the religious life of the region goslin has of course to come with us as has gurky that's what i would expect all the faithful men coming up here to celebrate the new king. And probably also while we're here, we are laying old Ricket to down into the tomb of our family. During our pilgrimage to Kent, I can't help but return to the local market. Pursuing wares? One stand in particular catches my attention. The merchant grins at me and proclaims, I have the wares if my lord has the coin. The exotic goods presented would surely make a nice profit back home, or maybe I could even save them as a gift. Seems like a worthy investment. Yes. Ethel Siege, my knight, peers out over the sprawling holy site of Kent as we make our way through the crowd. Kent is truly a sight to behold, a place where cultures meet and faiths come together to worship. Are we not blessed to get such an experience of familiarity and companionship? The feat spiritual spirituality can achieve... Yes. A pilgrim puts down a vote of doll and says, Holy, please make my scriptures more pious. I think we're going to make it more pious. At least we hit, at least we hit level one of success. That's okay for our very first pilgrimage. We're going to start on our journey back home. And there you have it. Our coronation is complete. And with the money... From the investment, we are going to then hold a feast, but I think we're going to hold the feast to the next episode. I think right now, I think right now things are good. I'm going to take cutting cornerstones because I would like to eventually hit centralization for the development growth. I don't know if we're going to spend time over here to do it. Golden Obligations is good too, but I don't think he's going to be producing many hooks because it's not really the man he is. Maybe, maybe later, if we consider going into Intrigue. He's more inclined towards uh, 
towards stewardship and diplomacy than he is towards intrigue, in spite of the fact his education assists intrigue. Which is quite interesting. Like, he could do intrigue. We'll see, though. We're not going to decide that today. That's for the future. Thank you for watching, and I hope you join me the next time we're here with young King Egelfrith of Cornwall. Ah, so much potential, so much we could do. I wonder where we're going to turn our gaze. Are we going to fight wars? Or are we going to stay peaceful and develop, and develop the territory? Are we going to spend time learning and interacting with our various relatives? Only time will tell. All hail, King Egelfert of Cornwall! All hail, the new king! Long live, Long, the king. live the king. Long live the king! 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 Long live the king!